Hi and welcome to the tutorial for Fleets, the Pleiad Conflict. Here I sit with uh, Jonathan and we're going to show you how to play this game. Start by finding the biggest table you have in the house because this is a game that will take some space. Start by shuffling all the systems. The game contains 10 unique system tiles. For an X player game, Use X plus one system tiles. In this tutorial, we are two players, so we use three tiles. Each player receives a player board. Apart from the graphics, there are no differences between the player boards. Each player starts with six diplomatic points and 26 mega credits, which is the currency in this game. We want to point out that we are playing with a prototype some components and some graphics will change slightly for the printed version. Take forth the 20 unique fleet boards and shuffle them. Place three of them face up to form a market. Do the same with the upgrade cards. Place the dice, markers and escort chips easily accessible for all players. Place the reference sheet on the table. It contains all necessary information for the escort ships. Each fleet has a corresponding fleet marker. Place the appropriate ones on the fleets in the market and put the others in the pile beside the fleet boards. For a two player game, take two player order tiles, shuffle them and hand out one to each player. Put the rest of the tiles back into the box. Shuffle the action cards and place the deck near the markets. We are now ready to play. In fleets, each round consists of six phases. These are the player order phase. This is where the player order is determined. Well, we've done that already. In the build phase, players buy and customize their fleets. Do you want to build the Death Star? Well, if it wasn't for copyright, you could. In the deployment phase, every single fleet must be deployed to a system. You'd better avoid the larger fleets. Then comes the diplomacy phase, where diplomatic effects and action cards are used to manipulate the game board. All evil plots are allowed. When diplomacy ends, battles start. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And last, rewards phase, where victory points and other rewards are given to the players. After each rewards phase, if a player has reached the victory point limit, he wins the game. For a shorter game, we recommend 5 as a goal limit, but the standard is 7. Now, enough talk, let's play. So, the first round has started, and by random chance, Jonathan was determined to go first. There are both pros and cons to being first, as you will see. Second phase is build phase, where we take turns buying fleets and upgrade cards. Jonathan fancies Ezreal, and buys it for 12 mega credits. A new fleet is revealed on the market, Excalibur. Enoch buys that one for 7 mega credits. When it is Jonathan's turn again, he buys an upgrade card from the market. Not all fleets have slots for upgrades, but Ezreal does. This upgrade is named Hangar Bay, and it lets Ezreal pay energy to add escort ships to the fleet during battle. Enoch spends his turn buying another fleet, this time Copernicus, a diplomatic fleet. Just as his other fleet, this one costs 7 mega credits. At this point, Jonathan has one large mothership with an upgrade, while Enoch has two smaller fleets, but we have both spent approximately the same amount of money. We shall see how this turns out. Anyway, Jonathan is pleased with his bargains and passes. Enoch buys an upgrade for Excalibur. Jonathan passes again. Enoch buys an upgrade for Copernicus too, and feels quite smug. Jonathan passes and Enoch passes, that means that the player interaction of the build phase is over, 
and all players may simultaneously buy escort ships to their fleets. There are eight different escort ships, all with their own stats and abilities. Use the reference sheet to learn more about them. Let's see what Enoch makes of his Excalibur fleet. He starts by purchasing a shield ship. All ships in fleets face right. That means that the shield ship must be placed upright, occupying two slots on top of each other. Enoch pays three mega credits for the ship and continues. He buys two defensive interceptors, two fighters and a generator ship. His fleet is now full. Even though he would like to add a battleship, there are no more empty slots. Jonathan's fleet as real is large, but it is very limited. It can almost only fit the smallest ships. He buys four fighters and one interceptor. As you can see, the escort ship tiles are double-sided, which makes the ships easier to find, since each ship size has two variants. Jonathan buys a generator ship, then he's done. Once again you see that the horizontal ship cannot be placed in two vertical slots. This means that Ezreal will never be able to have mechanic ships or cruisers. At the bottom of each fleet there is an energy parameter. All fleets begin with 4 energy. The reactor value indicates how much energy the fleet gains each turn. The build phase is over and we move on to the deployment phase. Since Jonathan has the first player order tile, he starts by deploying one of his fleets to a system of his choice. Each player has his own designated corner of the system tiles. This means that a player can never have more than one fleet at the same system, and no player may own more fleets than there are systems in the game. Jonathan chooses to deploy Ezreal to Tartarus. Enoch deploys his unarmed diplomatic fleet to Corpus. No surprise there. Since Jonathan has no more fleets, he passes, and Enoch gets to deploy his second fleet, Excalibur. Will he face Israel in battle, or be on the safe side? He deploys to Tartarus too. He enjoys a good fight. Once all fleets are deployed, the phase is over, and we move on to the diplomacy phase. In the diplomacy phase, players take turns doing one action each until everyone passes in a row, similarly to what we did in the build phase. An action is one of the following. Pay two diplomatic points to retreat a fleet from the game board. Pay six diplomatic points to force an opposing fleet to retreat from the game board. Pay two diplomatic points to tax a system. Play a diplomatic card. Jonathan passes his first turn. Enoch takes a look at the game board and chooses to tax Tartarus. This means that he pays two diplomatic points to get the rewards of that system. In this case, he receives one action card and two mega credits. Jonathan passes again, so Enoch uses the special diplomatic effects on Corpus. He pays one diplomatic point to draw one action card. As you can see, he now has two diplomatic action cards, which he may choose to use. However, he is not interested for the moment, so after another pass from Jonathan, he passes two, and the diplomacy phase is over. It is time for the battle phase, where a combat will occur if more than one fleet occupy the same system. In this case, both Excalibur and Ezreal occupy Tartarus. Interesting. A battle runs through four initiative stages, one through four. Every ship has an initiative value that determines in which stage it shoots. A low value means it is fast and fires early. Each ship fires only once each battle. Since Jonathan is the first player, he looks through his fleet for any ships with an initiative value 1, but he has none. If he had battle action cards, he could have used them now too. But he has no cards, so he passes. Enoch, on the other hand, has two fast fighters ready for battle. The first one targets the interceptor. 
Since the fighter has attack 1, Enoch rolls 1 die. For each 4, 5 or 6 in an attack roll, the defender is dealt 1 damage. He rolls a 3, that is no hit. He continues with his next chip and targets the interceptor again. This time, he rolls a 5, resulting in 1 damage. He also uses the built-in effect of the fighter, which says use one energy to deal plus one damage. A ship may only use its effect once per battle. The result is two damage, which is enough to destroy the interceptor. Enoch is now done with his first turn, and Jonathan gets a new turn, this time with initiative value two. He has one fighter, and it targets the Excalibur mothership. If the mothership is destroyed, the battle is won. Jonathan rolls a 4, which means 1 hit. He pays 1 energy to add another hit and deals 2 damage to Excalibur. Enoch reacts with the shield ship ability. He pays 1 energy to prevent 2 damage to any ship. Even though he saved his skin, I mean hull, this time, the effect cannot be used again this battle. Jonathan passes over to Enoch. Enoch has four ships on initiative two. The two interceptors have no attack value, so they don't attack. But the shield ship does. Two dice gives... One damage. Kaboom! Then the mothership attacks. It has four dies in attack. It attacks as real and deals one damage. Jonathan starts his third initiative phase by using Ezreal's special ability. Once per battle, it may use two energy to add two fighters to the fleet. How convenient. Four fighters engage in battle. When the mothership is about to attack with its nine dice, Enoch uses his interceptor ability. It may sacrifice itself and pay two energy to block a complete attack. Well played there. But Jonathan doesn't fold. He uses his hangar bay to add another fighter to his fleet for one energy. Another shot with another hit, and Excalibur now has four damage. One more and it is down. Jonathan passes, but Enoch has no initiative 3 ships, so he passes too. In the last initiative round, Jonathan only has a generator ship with two dice in attack. Could it bring down Excalibur? First, when it attacks, its special ability generates two energy to the fleet. Then on with the attack. And it is a hit! Excalibur is down. Five damage, and it only has five health. Undamaged escort ships are returned to the player board. They can be assigned to a new fleet later. Any damaged ships are discarded. The upgrade card and the fleet board, however, are placed in the bottom of the respective piles. Victory. The fleet marker is removed from Tartarus. In fact, Tartarus has an effect that says one victory point is awarded to a player who eliminates a fleet there. So one victory point to Jonathan. The last phase is the rewards phase. First off, each fleet that is alone at a system gains one victory point for its owner. Since both Ezreal and Copernicus are alone at their systems, both Enoch and Jonathan gains one victory point. After that, each fleet also receives the rewards for that system. Ezreal receives one action card and two mega credits. Copernicus receives two diplomatic points. The fleet markers are then removed from the game board, and each fleet receives new energy based on their reactor values. Copernicus also has an upgrade that generates two mega credits. Last but not least, 
Each player gains 2 diplomatic points, 6 mega credits and 1 action card. The first round is now finished and a new one can start. Usually the new player order will be randomized every round, but when you play two player games just switch the tiles. A new build phase starts. Enoch passes, Jonathan buys a new fleet. Enoch passes, Jonathan passes. Enoch doesn't want to buy score chips either, but Jonathan buys a couple. Then comes the deployment phase, where all fleets are deployed to the board. Then on to diplomacy phase. Enoch pays 6 diplomatic points to force Ezreal to retreat from the game board. Jonathan pays 2 diplomatic points to tax Altax 3. Enoch passes and so does Jonathan. Since there are no two fleets at the same system, there are no battles, so we jump straight to the rewards phase and collect our rewards. One victory point each, system rewards, trade goods, reactor values, diplomatic points, mega credits and a card. So the game continues until a player reaches the victory point limit. We hope this has given you a lot of insight in the game and an eagerness to try it out yourself. Before we stop though, we just want to give you an overview of the cards in the game. There are only two types, diplomatic cards and battle cards. They can only be played in their respective phase. And here are a few examples. This is a diplomatic card called Vito. Spend one diplomatic point to play it. Choose a system. All its effects and abilities are cancelled for the rest of the round. The electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, costs 4 energy to play, but reduces the energy of an opposing fleet by 6. Its effect can be devastating if used with proper timing. The shield card costs 1 energy to play and prevents 2 damage to any ship. No more talk will prevent all movements from a system for the rest of the round. That includes retreating and forcing opponents to retreat. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We hope that you too will enjoy playing this game.